Hello, I'm Simon Calder. I'm very excited to be back on MCN6. Viewers may recognize me as the host of Back to the City Minneapolis Music Conversation. But today, before bringing Back to the City back, I have in my presence Samuel Robertson. And we're going to talk about a great book. The book is the Holy Bible, containing the Old Testament, translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently compared and revised with illustrations by Samuel Robertson and preparations for printing by 1111 Press in the year of 2022. How would someone who wants to get a hold of this physical book go about doing so? Yeah, you have to pre-order it at 1111press.com slash Old Testament. The book gets printed and comes out in June of 2022. Then it'll get shipped to your house. I've also been working on a book recently. What's and there's a lot of um, overlap, I think, between uh, the content of that book, which emerges from the Back to the City show, and is essentially about harnessing creativity. There's a lot of overlap between the contents of that book called Her Hummingbird Heart, which will be out in November. Cool. And many of the things that you were saying in a recent interview, in your interview with mplsart.com, you highlighted that you wanted to undertake a large, flexible illustration project that you could evolve with and learn from. Could you say a little bit more about how you selected the Old Testament? Yeah, well, I, I didn't know much about um, the Old Testament, um, but I. I knew that it's broken into so many different books so that I'd, I wouldn't have to get locked into a style. I could, I could, um, yeah, I had a sense of how big it would end up being. Um, and then just, I had to know that it would be fresh the whole time, that I'd want to keep working on it. You highlighted in that past interview that you have a sense of the Old Testament being the book that has most shaped humanity. Yeah, I had a sense of that for sure. And then you also highlighted what type of impact uh, it had had on you um, in, with your first experience of it at Roman Catholic um, grade school and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a word, not very much impact yeah. at that early stage in your life. Yeah. Um, something that I find really interesting about the project is that uh, you wanted, uh, to quote, quoting you again, you wanted to approach it like a lost, ageless, estranged child. So you're kind of maintaining your personal kind of lack of experience of this book, which you're very aware has had a massive impact on human history. Uh, yeah. Could you say a little bit more about that intention, to maintain this lost, ageless, estranged child component. Yeah, I guess like, it feels like part of the society that we're living in is like, is geared towards keeping us um, ignorant of history to some extent. And like, part of that is like what I put into it, like my whole um, schooling, I didn't really care to learn too much about history. It just seemed like, um, like, I, which is not important to me. But I think in part it was just how it was presented. I don't feel like my schooling at all, like, was geared towards making, like, a critical thinker or, like, a, a civic-minded personality out of the students. Like, um, like it, I feel like any of that had to emerge, like, from outside of the school mm. system. Um, but, again, it could, it, like, I know people do emerge with, like, tons of, um, drive to make things better and to connect with people and like but I just feel like my I did not escape with any sort of like um, not, I didn't really get any of that I kind of like uh, was yeah gravitated more towards like uh, like creative outlets and like sculpture and painting and writing and music but it um, yeah sort of like I felt, yeah, like an orphan to history and like having mm -hmm. this book be such a, um, yeah, such a colossal influence on like everyone in some way or another, even if it's just like the, um, the motion of society that has like embraced this book on some level. It, um, 
Yeah, it definitely has. It's like within our core, within our bones. I wanted to explore what that would be, having no memory of the book or anything that has been so formative. But and just to like lean into that and like yeah, then yeah. As you were creating the paintings, and of course, and discovering um, the stories, of course. There's the theme of exile is quite prominent. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that relates to this theme of estrangement. Given that estrangement and exile are relevant themes in the Old Testament and also aspects of the human condition, mm -hmm. um, how, were there any moments when uh, you f you were kind of particularly able to harness this lost, ageless, estranged child uh, kind of persona in a way that kind of fit with all of that. A lot of the characters are sort of carry themselves in like an aloof sort of way, where they're like more into like sensation of like I guess food or mm. yeah, just experiences and stuff. Um, so I guess like. Because, yeah, it was like after I finished the book, I kind of put words to it about, like, the estranged child. Like, I didn't have a, um, I didn't necessarily, I had, like, a feeling of it, but, like, mm. I just, I did it without, like, too much thought before it. And then tried to make sense of it afterwards of, like, what this, like, of, like, why I didn't want to research it, the book or the history or anything. So, um, so yeah, in that, in that sense, like, I put, like, the, the characters are like a lot of them have like elements of like self portraiture, just like not my likeness or anything, but just like activities and um, just behaviors that like are like within me, you know. Are there any paintings that come to mind in particular in that way? Um, like one of them, Isaiah 219. There's like an oil derrick drilling and like mm. natural gas fires in the background, and there's like a coal miner type of type of guy doing the splits in front of it. And he's got these blue shorts on with like a very faintly you can see like a handprint mm. on the blue shorts. That's semi-autobiographical, not that I ever worked in a coal mine, but um, I canoed with some friends down the Missouri River, the first part of it. It was like a 60-day trip and um, we like canoed by the light of the natural gas fires that mm. like were in these booming um, fracking towns, you know, like, I forget the exact, I think it was Montana or something, but, um, yeah, and then the, the specific shorts are, like, the ones that I was, like, wearing, and, like, we had to patch our canoe, because it got a hole in it early on, and, like, the, we had to use, like, charcoal that we found to thicken up the epoxy, and, like, my hands were all covered in coal and stuff, um, mm. which I wiped on my pants, and they, they just, like, short shorts, and then they just, um, yeah, remained that that uh, that stain remained on them the whole time. So there's like some more directly autobiographical pieces like that. Mm. You referred in the previous interview to bringing yourself into the conversation between this text and humans. <laughs> yeah, um, yourself as you are, mm -hmm. um, weaving yourself into that conversation. Um, it makes me think of the story, like the New Testament story of the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. um, and this sense of kind of being outside of something. And then once you're immersed in the process of creating these paintings for this project, mm -hmm. perhaps you have this sensation of belonging more, of finding yourself at home more. Yeah. Uh, could you, which is why, you know, because that's of course what happens to the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been rolling around in the pig muck and he thinks he's so ashamed of what he's done. Uh, that he doesn't think that he'll be accepted back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the fatted calf is cooked to him, oh, and, he's right. very, and he belongs, yeah. and he's welcomed. Yeah. Um, does any of that resonate uh, with, with your process of finding yourself at home yeah, in I feel this like, text? I feel like I belong in the text now on some level. Um, not in any, like, normal sense. Um, but yeah, I do feel definitely closer with the text having spent so long with it. Um, yeah. 
Something that really struck me as interesting was that you said with many of the paintings, perhaps with all of them, uh, it was just a case of showing up for them, mm -hmm. putting the time in, and then they made themselves. Yeah, definitely. That I experienced that a lot. Like I had to get into a mindset, um, and, like think over the passage, and just like um, kind of like flip through source material and just see like be open to the spark hitting and like take notes of like what it could be. Yeah. What it could, I could see like this painting becoming, um, and then just kind of like yeah, jumping in like. Uh, I never did like sketches in a separate. I like there's a piece of paper, and I just sketch on there and and paint it. Just like try to jump right in and then yeah, just let the let the passage and my experience and what was um, interesting at the moment kind of direct me. Yeah. Um, a lot of times based in humor it was like mm. sort of like a um, just like the guide a lot of times to explore these deeper things but um, I'm just like yeah gravitate more towards um, yeah things I think is funny if I if I'm gonna be painting something in terms of the the function of the humor yeah. uh, again something that you highlighted before is that there was you use this metaphor of there being a little crust of humor and that it served the purpose of making uh, the story accessible through letting guards down, yeah. having people let their guards down. Could you expand just a little bit more on uh, the role that humor is playing? Because it doesn't seem like you're poking fun at anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I really, at no point in the book do I get that impression. Uh, it, the humor seems to be enabling something to happen, enabling some kind of encounter mm -hmm. to happen. Um, yeah. Is that right? And can you expand a bit more? Yeah, I'll try. Um, I feel like, yeah, a lot of times, like, the humor could... A lot... I mean, some of them are for, like, violent uh, depiction. I don't, like, portray very much violence at all in the book. Like, there's, like, a couple sacrifices of, like, goats or whatever, but but most of it is just, like, I will use like something else in the surrounding text, like with um, God, like declaring that he's gonna kill like a ton of people and stuff because of their wrongdoings. Um, I'll sort of come at that from like a different angle where it's not it's not like a direct interpretation, like word for word verbatim about what's happening, but like maybe in this moment God's like talking about other things and then those can be like what show um, yeah what's going on and his his demands and his orders um, but then for like the, the painting sometimes like doesn't seem like it has anything to do with it until you like really read it closely then yeah so like you would you wouldn't look at it and be like this is like a violent uh, thing that's going on but then like when you when you're looking at the the passage, it will start to make sense, and, the, and it's like, just like, it expands. Um, I feel like the the passage and the painting both expand, like, to to deeper meanings. Is there a specific painting uh, that you could use as an example of that? I think Ezekiel, either twenty five six or thirty two eight. Mm -hmm. One of them is, um, like, the God character is like dressed like kind of the rest of them, but he's like the one that the focus is obviously on. And they're all like gathered around the the bed of a pickup truck. It's like a really damning passage where these guys all like went astray and he's gonna um, bring them all down, you know? Um, but then like, it was like because they were like partying and stuff. So then I um, like was thinking like what food and how do I depict that there's like a party going on? And it's like this, the, the group of people is around them and then there's like a, like a party sub the entire length of the pickup truck. That's a party food. I like got away without depicting any actual violence, but then like, mm. um, yeah, when you read the passage, then it starts to make sense. Like that's one example. There's like, there's a ton of those because there's like, yeah, a lot of violent, um, violent passages and then 
yeah, to try to, I don't want to, I don't like painting violence per se, mm -hmm. like, uh, so kind of is a way to come at it from underneath or something, mm. or above or like whatever. You made a reference to the pickup truck in that particular painting. Uh -huh. uh, and as the viewers can see from the various paintings that um, we've been showing, there's lots of cowboy hats, mm -hmm. uh, lots of microphones yep. um, showing up. Um, you made references in the previous interview to the consumerist culture uh, that uh, we're kind of born into and you wanted to kind of nod to that. Mm -hmm. Could you expand a little bit more on uh, on some of these features, like the cowboy hats, yeah. the microphone, uh, any of these other recurring motifs, yeah. um, construction workers. Yeah, I guess like, I don't know, when I settle on a motif, like it, it has to feel like there's like, even if I can't put my finger on it, like I don't think I need to even, but there's just like a, um, something like below it that is like exemplifies like a um like an aspect of culture or is like kind of symbolic of humanity on some level um so like with the cowboy hats and stuff it was like a just like kind of like a country western feel to the um that was just in the first three books i, I think i only use the, like the cowboy hat like maybe one time after the first three books, but mm -hmm. it was just like the kind of um, theme that generated the initial pieces for the work. Um, but then, yeah, I guess like each each of these like recurring um, symbols have just some sort of like ripe expression. You know, some other recurring themes were like plungers and eggs and like yeah the microphone um why the microphone um i feel like there's like yeah so much dialogue between god and the people and then it's just like sort of a modern approachable like conversation um symbol maybe like hmm. uh yeah um yeah just broadcasting your uh, your words with it, mm. I suppose. It's, uh, a lot of the paintings match up with passages that are self-referential regarding um, images. Uh, so, for example, the, uh, at the very beginning of Genesis, so God created man in his own image. And then at the beginning of Exodus, uh, for they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto me. I just think that that particular passage from the beginning of Exodus is so pertinent to the project. Let's visit some of my favorite paintings. Okay. One of the very few slightly violent ones, but comically violent, uh, is, I think it's Genesis 32, 24. Um, there's a reference to wrestling. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, wrestling with a man uh, until the break of day, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course we have two wrestlers. And I'm kind of like zooming in on that one on the back of you highlighting not not wanting to depict violence. Yeah. Could you expand a little bit more on that desire of yours? Because obviously there is a lot of violence in yeah. the Old Testament. Um, so that seems like a very intentional choice. I don't often like want to depict people getting hurt and, and killed and stuff. It's just like what I brought into the project. That's like who I am. I don't, I don't particularly enjoy that. A lot of it isn't direct interpretations. It's just like um, a feeling. Like the project is like way more feeling based. Yeah, the project really is feeling based. Are you familiar with um, Ignatius Loyola? Mm -mm. Okay, so Ignatius Loyola developed a process of Bible contemplation and the way in which you've described uh, the role of feeling in your process and the emergence of these, uh, of these pieces, mm -hmm. it fits so much 
with Ignatius Loyola's um, method of engaging with the Bible. I have to check uh, it out. Where um, we, and it's primarily, he developed it primarily for the New Testament. Okay. And at the beginning of the process, you select uh, a passage where there's interaction uh, between Jesus and other characters. And uh, the idea is to engage with those passages, bringing in all the senses. And you were referring, there's a lot of food <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. in the paintings. You refer to the senses, you refer to feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, there's a whole spiritual practice uh, you know, that was developed by Ignatius Loyola um, to, to feel into these moments and really live these moments and use the senses to, um, to bring it alive. Cool. And it was all geared towards um, being heart-centered, getting the heart involved. The reason why I bring all of that up is I wonder whether the practice over seven years mm -hmm. of creating these paintings to honor these narratives. Mm -hmm. Could you expand a bit more on the transformation that you went through, sure. through applying this process, which begins just as um, a commitment to completing this project? Yeah. Could you expand a bit more on, on the practice? It seems almost like a spiritual practice. Yeah, in some ways it definitely felt like that. Um, yeah. Um, I guess like the painting started out like more crude and more direct, more directly relating to the text more often, I guess, maybe. Um, and yeah, I feel like deeper soul searching and stuff was like going on throughout the, the endeavor. Um, you became a father. Mm -hmm. uh, you took on a new uh, profession. Yeah, doing mostly tile work, like so it's remodeling and tiling people's houses, kitchens, bathrooms, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then just like the project was kind of like grounding and like it was like a purpose to continue to come back to because like I, I was liking what was being generated from it. So it was never like, it never pushed me away from the project because like I, I could feel like the growth in terms of like um, what I was able to capture um, in a painting, um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, they started up like, they, they got like more complex as it went and I kind of pulled on different themes and um, I guess I don't really know how to, how to it, like um, vocalize what the transformations have been, but just kind of like a sense of like um, more respect and admiration for like the world and its inhabitants, kind of, you know? Yeah. I mean, even though I like, cared before, I was like in my early 20s and like maybe more apathetic to things and like, um, yeah, I feel like I came out on the other side with like a, a much different outlook and um, yeah, a sense of urgency and like a, yeah, I guess a more round understanding of what like the problems that our society faces mm. are, I guess. But whether or not that's like because of the the Bible itself or whatever, or that that like um, that undertaking, or just because time passed, it's kind of hard to like um, figure out what that is. But time passed, whilst in the meantime you remain committed mm -hmm. to this practice. Yeah, and for whatever reason, through remaining committed to that practice. It seems like um, you became more compassionate. I'd say so. Yeah, yeah. more heart-centered. Definitely, yeah. Uh, which is, yeah, that's why I brought up Ignatius Loyola. That's uh, awesome. Because it's interesting yeah. to think that you are contemplating these um, passages from scripture, mm -hmm. and especially as you find the art emerging in a you know, maybe the subconscious mind is is more yeah, definitely. involved in, as you get deeper into the project. Mm -hmm. um, could you give an example of a painting where uh, that was 
more at play with the painting that emerged isn't one that you would have planned out, mm -hmm. uh, but there seemed to be something very right yeah. about the painting that emerged. Um, yeah, some of them in like, a, a lot of like the discovery within creating a painting, like it would happen at different times or like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't feel complete. And then like right towards the end, it would be like, well, this is what, what makes the painting um, like up at the buzzer kind of. Um, and I guess a couple that come to mind is um, like a painting from Haggai where like a guy is coming out of the water and in his skirt is um, like a bunch of different types of meat. And he's like coming into like the, there's like the fishermen, two like elderly fishermen like sitting on buckets. Um, and then like the painting was almost done and like I had the fishing line just going into the water. Mm. Um, was like, and then I was like, well should I make the fishing pole like bending like he's catching something? And then the guy that was holding all the meat in his skirt was holding a fish in his skirt too. So I just put the um, the line going to that fish's mouth. Like the guy, as long as he's coming in to the shore with like a bunch of different kinds of meat in his uh, in his his skirt, and like he might as well be like helping the fisherman out, just like carrying the fish in too. Yeah. I don't know if that uh, that's like one. Yeah, there's like a bunch like that where like right at the end like got like a little extra chance to kind of um, play with the, the scene. Mm. But, um, yeah, it fits together in this way that you couldn't have planned. Yeah. Um, so in the, in the forthcoming Back to the City book uh, that comes out in November, it's called Her Hummingbird Heart, and it's about harnessing creativity. Cool. Uh, and there's a lot of focus on The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, okay. uh, which influenced the songwriter Sarah Morris that that particular Back to the City book is about. Um, are you familiar with the artist's way? I am not. I should check it out, though. Uh, have you heard? Do you know Julia Cameron? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a 12-week course, uh, to, and the subtitle to the artist's way is A Spiritual Path to Higher Creativity. And for Julia Cameron, creative living and spirituality kind of go together. It's increasingly difficult for her, she says, to sort of separate the two. Cool. Uh, and she talks about moments like the one that you were just describing where suddenly this thing that you couldn't have planned for happens and it feels like, um, yeah, you discover these treats yeah. by kind of like surrendering a bit to mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, said, and she, so she says that the word God is used in the artist's way, but people who are skeptical of the term uh, can treat it as an acronym for good, orderly direction or flow. Cool. So we have these moments That's of being awesome. in the flow and then it feels yeah. like the universe is responsive. And, yeah, um, definitely. And uh, it's, it just, so it's quite a famous um, course and book on uh, the creative process and I've read quite a lot about it in, in my forthcoming book. But That's awesome. um, the way in which God is talked about in the artist's way, good, orderly direction or flow, um, does that resonate with your experience of the process and the practice you're describing? For sure, yeah, that, um, that definitely resonates. And I like the good orderly direction acronym too. That's, uh, yeah, it feels like, yeah, when you're in, when you're in the flow, it just like, um, yeah, you can just catch on to things that, um, that's kind of why I would jump into paintings like before they were fully hashed out to like allow that in. You know, like I wasn't, I haven't been a big sketcher in a long time. Like I don't do much planning or sketching. So like, yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, getting colors down or getting like, there's like a million ways to like loosen up the, to like let that flow in by just like giving it a little bit here and there and then just like seeing what sticks. And then like the, the way I painted, I could, it wasn't like watercolor. I was using latex house paint. So I could always paint over something that didn't work, which like, um, lends well to not sketching too much because you can mm. always change it and you can also water it down like watercolor so you can get a lot of, it's felt very versatile yeah. to allow for that flow. The medium kind of allows for the emergence of something. Yeah. 
and yeah, again, that's another f focus of Julia Cameron's. And, cool. Uh, yeah, Sounds this, really good. Sounds yeah. like a good book. If, and it fits with your experience. Yeah. Like, did you experience that more with this particular project for whatever reason? Um, well, maybe, well, just because like the scope of work was so large, so it like happened more because of spending so much time with it, maybe on some level, but also I think, yeah, it allowed, yeah, it did allow for that to flow, like, uh, in really good ways, I think. So I think it definitely has to do with the subject matter and the material, yeah. for sure.